The build we're doing right now freaks me out. In the late 70s, early 80s, Toyota partnered up with a company called Chinook to build one of the coolest little campers that was on the market at the time. And some of the crazy thinkers in the marketing department thought, how cool would it be to do a version of that same vehicle, but do it today? It'll be off-road style. We're starting with a TRD Sport Tacoma with a manual transmission. You've heard of tiny houses. This will probably be more like a micro house. We've had some renderings drawn. We're starting to work on some of the engineering drawings and what it's gonna take and how many people we can actually fit into it. That being the sleeping quarter above the cab. Uh, guy standing at the sink there. Guy sitting on the toilet there. And there's your table. Once we get the material here and start building it, do you think you'll build it in sections? I feel pretty confident in building the floor up to the mid rail. And then from up there, we can kind of build everything off the table. We really didn't want it to look like a refrigerator on the back of a truck, so you'll see that there is curve. It's all rounded edges. We want everything rounded. We want to eliminate as much of the approach angle, so when we're doing an off-road type of situation, you're not dragging the tail. We're looking at a really cool color scheme that is reminiscent, and I won't go much further than that because that's all to be determined. Some of the big challenges are gonna be just having to shrink everything. Motorhomes are built to be able to hold someone six foot two to walk nose to tail in this vehicle, um, be able to cook, there's room for a couch spread out. We are so space limited that finding things that we can package inside of there is gonna be a challenge on its own. Another really cool thing about this vehicle is it's gonna be a beast. I mean, people are gonna know when you show up. Whether you're hitting the uh, grocery store on your way out of town, it's gonna stick up four feet above any other vehicle in that parking lot. Should be no problem finding your car. Don't have to worry about where you parked it because as soon as you walk out the door, you'll see it. I just hope that I can be half as cool as the original Chinook was. I know it'll be more modern. I know there'll be more technology in it, but we'll see. Being around racing my whole life, race cars are cool looking. The very first thing we did when we got the truck in here was pulled the bed off it so we see what we have to work with. How many pieces below are gonna be relocated. The bed itself to pull it off, pretty quick job. Instead of just looking at pictures or climbing underneath it, we can actually see what needs to be moved to be able to make the space to be able to package our camper. Took some drawings of what we think this is gonna end up. Brad bent up some tubes, we just tacked them together. And you'll see, this will give you an idea of the height, watch the lights up there and stuff too, of the vehicle. So, that is gonna be the basic shape. You'll see that this bar right here kind of follows the body line over there. This gets cut out. This will be your walkthrough. This area will drop down, spare tire will be gone. We need to go below frame height if we want to be able to stand up inside this. Otherwise, the vehicle would have to be almost 11 feet tall. Literally hours and hours and hours have been spent figuring out how much tubing we're going to need, where to make the cuts, what the shape is going to be. In the last couple of weeks, we've made huge, huge leaps and bounds. We actually have a complete cage that for the first time uh, today, we're going to try to see if it'll fit on the back of the Tacoma. I'm feeling pretty good about this moment. Um, like I said, but it happened really quick. So anything can go wrong when you're talking about going from sticks of metal to a complete camper cage in two weeks. I think we're there. The installation of it went a thousand times better than I could have even expected. It's quite an exciting feat to see everything come together and, uh, and it looked right. There is still so much left to do. We still need to figure out how we're gonna skin this thing. The easiest thing would be to do just sharp edges everywhere. That doesn't look good at all. 
So we need to work with some of our aluminum tools and we're gonna to try to make rounded corners all the way around. What I see behind me is a vehicle that is engineered correctly, but also can be made to look really cool. Just to be able to take a camper anywhere on this planet, it needs to be able to get down these steep trails that you could do in a normal off-road Tacoma is not one of those projects that you're just bolting some stuff on or putting a camper shell on the back of a pickup truck bed. I mean, it needs to be able to climb a mountain. You can see all the X bracing and added tubes that we put in. On the outside, as you can see, we have started putting some paneling on. We put these guys in here to unite the shell and the body and make it as one. So when it does go to twist, they both twist together. Well, we have got a lot done on this camper. It probably doesn't look substantially different other than we have the roof skinned. We have the rounded corners skinned, which is a process as well. And then we have, you know, kind of a body line coming through here and getting these to all line up and stuff takes a little bit of time and patience. We're trying to make these fit on here well, which are the stock Tacoma fender flares. We wanted to keep the width in the middle of the vehicle, narrow it up for the trails on the top and the bottom, obviously for tree avoidance, I guess you would say. There's been ups and downs. Um, sometimes we'll go a couple of weeks where everything seems to be going just perfect. And then other times it just seems like, oh God, we gotta go back to step one again. Just last week, we had the whole roof done, skinned, all the panels rolled over the side so that the other panels would meet up to them. And we decided to put a moon roof in it. We kind of put this little bubble up top right here, kind of give us a little bit more headroom. And so we're gonna do a Lexan center, kind of like a sunroof. It'll pop up, I think, six or seven inches above the roof. This ended up being a pretty good package. We'll make a gas door, but then you also want to obviously separate gas fumes and potential dangers from the shell of the truck. We were able to package two batteries under the hood of the car. It's a real benefit because it gives us space for storage inside the camper. This was probably one of the most labor intensive time intensive pieces to make on this thing so far. I mean, I feel like we're literally building a mobile house and those are kind of two things I haven't ever built is a mobile house. Today, the paint chips arrived from PPG. Um, this is the first version of them. There's three of the colors that I'm sold on right now. I love the way they look together. Once I could wrap my head around what the outside was gonna look like all the way down to the rendering, then it becomes, let's try and visualize something that is uh, pretty darn cool for the interior. The floor of this will be covered in a teak sauna style wood. Aesthetically, it looks really good and it goes well with what I'm thinking for the interior colors inside the vehicle. In this kind of a build, usable space is everything. This door right here had so much nuance to it that probably, what would you say, Brad, 150 hours into this door maybe? The hard part is having two different angles. It was never a flat door in the back. They were always gonna shape it to the back of the, well, that shape makes it really hard for things to open and shut. Originally, we thought it was gonna be a little bit easier than what it was, but we didn't know it was gonna be that tight. The mechanical side of it, I see as not a whole bunch of unknowns, and that's what makes me happy. We went bold with this vehicle. Everything that I see says we made the right choice. Definitely a one-off. Hopefully you're in another section where somebody's like, did you see that Tacoma over there in the Toyota booth? Like that's, I'm hoping for that reaction. Today we're at Complete Customs in McKinney, Texas. The car was dropped off about a week and a half ago. We have put a whole lot of man hours in it. Probably as many or more than any other SEMA build off the top of my head. We've taken it from the ground up. We're excited because it's different, something new. I'm a hot rod guy. We build hot rods, we build custom cars. I've never put a kitchen in a car. Exciting to be a part of it, see Marty's vision. You see a lot of the campers that they're doing for Overland now. Most of them have a door that goes right here. Yeah. We didn't 
want that. We wanted to have that as a bed area, as a gathering area and everything else. So we did the door in the back and that was another one. So we did the pass through and the door in the back and, and those were kind of, at the very beginning, those were important things. Right now, we're working on getting all the body work completed. We're, we're trying to get the, the shell of it in primer. We want to get a lot of the dust work done and all the messy stuff done first. Part of the challenge of doing with this vehicle is electrical is one. You're running everything off of a car battery or a couple of car batteries in order to get power to everything that you need. Lights, a stove, there's propane involved. There's a bathroom involved with the toilet. So there's water flow, there's disposals. So there's a lot of stuff doing with this truck that we don't normally do, that we're looking forward to get done. And we have plans on, but we're looking to get in the inside once the outside's done and really get after the inside. We're trying right now to figure out a, a really good way to be able to show off the interior at a car show because it is going to be pretty neat on the interior. So we're going to get the whole thing in primer. We're going to get it painted. We're going to finish the inside, finish the electrical, the water, the lighting. It'll be a totally different truck. We still need to do suspension on it when we get it back. We need to do wheels and tires, um, a myriad of different things. So we'll stay on top of it. We'll make sure it doesn't get too far behind. And if it does, then uh, we'll have to readdress it and figure out how to get it back on schedule.